Welcome to Rose Flower Radio, the show that goes behind the scenes to figure out your favorite artists, the ins and outs of their lives, and what they're doing in the music industry. I'm your host, Michael Wilson. And with him today is me, Finley Mathias. With us, it's an incredibly talented guitarist, mm. singer, mm. songwriter mm. from San Diego, California. Mm. He toured Europe in at the end of 2019, early 2020 with the Casey Hensley Band. Uh, he now plays shows all across Southern California, LA, San Diego, all around, performing his own music as well as covers with his trio band. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David T. Spotted. Woo! Hey, oh, thank you. That was quite. That was quite an introduction. I didn't expect that. I was like, we, we practiced that before. Yeah, oh yeah, we, yeah. Totally, we spent like a, there was a full period. These guys got here like hours ago. We yeah. were like, right, we need to. We got to prep <laughs> for our man David showing <laughs> That's up. That's awesome. We also oh, had to, you know, you. give the show the hype that you know. Yeah. The 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 level of swag that your music portrays. Oh. As the podcast, we also have to reach the same level. You Thank you. Wow. So, it is yeah. true. So we were quite worried that we weren't going to be able to reach the level of swag, but I think... <laughs> we I think you guys did. I mean, so far, I've, uh, this has been pretty swaggy. Swaggy yeah. indeed. <laughs> Speaking of swag, yeah. talk to us about you. I mean, like, we all know David. I The thing that sticks out to me the most, we don't have to go into this right now. Mm-hmm. I would love to know how you toured Europe and how oh. that, where did that come from? Yeah. Um, I, I was, I was 19. I just turned 19 and I just got out of high school too. Just a couple months, um, went through the summer and stuff like that and was playing like once in a while. And, um, and in San Diego, there's a lot of these like jam night mm-hmm. stuff that they have. Like they have a lot of them up here too, yeah, but yeah. they're really common in San Diego. Like a lot of bars on weeknights will have jam nights so that obviously they get free music. Yeah. Right. Um, so I went to one um, that was in my hometown of Vista and um, I just went to like have fun, yeah. whatever. And the drummer of that band um, at the time, he was running the, um, the, uh, the jam night. Yeah. Um, and I had met him before. His name's Evan. I had met Evan before, um, but I didn't think he would remember me just because obviously like, you know, I wasn't, hadn't really made too much of a name for myself yet. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was just, I just went to the jam and I was just playing. Um, He, and then afterwards he was like, bro, like you're sick. Like you're a sick player. Like all I was doing was playing guitar. And he was like, dude, you're like so dope at this. And I was like, thank you. Um, He was like, yeah, dude, like that's sick. And I was like, cool. And then I didn't really think anything of it. I was like, cool. Like I got a bunch of compliments. And then then I went home and I was like, I was working at Vans at the time. And um, yeah, which was fun. Um, We're gonna talk about retail too. That's oh. a- <laughs> <laughs> when I said fun, I meant oh, hell not, or, not fun. <laughs> hell um, yeah. Um, and so I remember it was like that happened on a Tuesday, and then I think I had like a shift on like a on like a Friday or something like that mm-hmm. of that same week, and I and I get a um, maybe it was a Monday, like the Monday of like the next week. Yeah, I all of a sudden get like this Facebook message on. A messenger, like luckily, I use Facebook because that's where like all the old musicians yeah, in totally. San Diego yeah, kind of. The, I was about, I was about to say Facebook. All right, bro. yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but, granddad. Yeah, right. <laughs> For real. Okay, boomer. <laughs> For real, I know. Um, but like in San Diego, it's kind of a necessity to have like a Facebook because a lot of the older musicians that's totally. where they use and like that's how they contact. Anyway, not saying that Evan's no, old yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah. that, but like, <laughs> um. But so I get a DM from him on on Facebook and he's like, yo, bro, like, you know, you want to come stop by the house? Because at the time, him and the him and the lead singer, Casey, they were engaged. And so they were living oh, together. Sick. Um, and so I was like, I was like, they were like, hey, you want to come by the house? Like, we want to discuss some things with you and like ask you some stuff. And I was like, and all right. Before this, the only time that you've ever spoken to him was was at the jam night, and he just complimented you. Yeah, he just complimented me. And then he was like, me. "Hey, you want to come over?" Yeah. Okay. So I was like, I mean, sure. Were you a little like, skeptical? Or anything? I was a little skeptical. Yeah. A little I was like, like, this, like, I mean, like they were they're a reputable band, right? <laughs> this man yeah. hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, for real. I know. Um, yeah, I was a little, a little skeptical, but they were a pretty reputable band, so I was so, yeah. like, you know, how, like, how bad can it really? Yeah, be? Yeah, exactly. You know? And I had a friend who'd played guitar for them before, oh, yeah. so oh, I was yeah, like. Fair. I was like, okay, you know, like, I'm not really that He's still alive. So. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I just went over, and then they, they, within, like, the first 10 minutes, they laid it on me. They were like, listen, so we are going on tour in Europe in October and November mm-hmm. of this year, and we have 
tried to get guitar players to get on the tour, but everybody's already busy. And we thought we were just going to have to hire some European guy. Mm -hmm. But when we, when I, and Evan was like, when I heard you at the jam night, I was like, this guy rips. Let's see if he'd be down and if he's open. And I was like, I was like, oh, I mean, (laughs) Europe. (laughs) Yeah. Holy shit. And I was about to move and everything. And like, it was right in the middle of, it was like, it was like, it would have been like a month chunk out of school, which would have been like four weeks. Yeah. Um, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, four weeks out. Of, I was I meant to say like four weeks out of an 11 week quarter, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah. like, um, that's almost half the entire quarter. Like, that's almost two months. Exactly. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so I was like, okay. I was like, listen, so I explained to them, I was like, I'm about to go to school. Yeah. And like, let me discuss this with my college a little bit. See if they'd be willing to let me like take a couple weeks off. Yeah, because then you so you don't have to decide between like this exactly this tour and this, starting your college career. Exactly, like awesome opportunity. So I contacted the school and I was like, I was like, so listen, I just got the opportunity to like go on tour. Yeah. Um, would you be down to like let me like? do some online work. Like you can just send me the school work and I'll do it while I'm on the tour. And they were like, wow, that's really exciting. We can't do that. And I was like, so they basically just went, no, they were just like, yeah, yeah. That's like cool story. Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. They're like, (laughs) that's fucking sick, but sorry, we can't. That bothers me. Yeah. Yeah, It's a little, yeah. It's a little annoying. I know that as a college, you're an institution where you have to kind of, you know, monitor, like you're not the one person who's like probably, you know, there's a bunch of stuff happening. But at the same time, there's a part of me that's like, Dog, this man is about to tour Europe. Yeah, and you're, gonna like, like, yeah. you're gonna be like, no, you actually have to stay here and come to class. Yeah, so, that's like, exactly. I don't know. That's, yeah, it's a little weird. And but I understand it too. Like they can't, like, I don't know. I guess they just don't have like the wherewithal to do that and they don't want to put it on the teacher. I don't know. Maybe the teacher has to. Yeah, because of course, know. this was before online Oh, yeah, class. this was before COVID, yes, wasn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Interesting. The, the, the norm. I'd be See, curious. So, I yeah. bet you if, like, that happened now, they would have been like, Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah, like, <laughs> everything else is, on, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even here, half our people aren't even here right now. Yeah, it would have been it would have been a little bit easier, I think, after the fact of COVID. Just because, like, number one, like, you know, I could just make the argument, oh, I'm just, I'm in a different time zone. Yeah. yeah. And I could just watch the Zoom recordings, you know. So, like… It would have been different, but it happened right before. And they were like, yeah, sorry, you can't. They said, you can start a quarter late, though, if you want to start, like, another quarter. And I was like, I don't really want to start a quarter late. Yeah, be, like, behind everybody. Yeah, because then I wouldn't be able to take any of my core classes, you know? And I was like, okay. So, so I sat and I pondered and (laughs) talked to my parents about it. Because they also had to be a part of the discussion, obviously. I'm a 19-year-old kid. Um, And... I was, I was, and my mom actually came up with the idea. How about, cause we looked at the tour dates. And so actually the tour dates, the, f- there was like 11 tour dates. Okay. Um, and the first three were, were spread out over a span of three weeks. Okay. So, and then the last eight were, were within a 10 day period. Oh, wow. wow. So there was like one travel day. One day, oh no, sorry, there's seven, seven other days. So there was 10 dates in total. There's yeah. three over the first couple of weeks. And then the last 10 days, there was like both my travel days and one day in between that I wouldn't be playing it a show. Hmm. And so I was like, okay, let me bring this up to them. Maybe the, maybe they'll go for like, oh, I'll just, can I just come on the last leg of the tour yeah. and just do those last 10 days? Yeah, mm-hmm. do like the bit that's more efficient in your exactly. time, and more, essentially. Yeah, and more and more important, you know, like because yeah. there's so many shows going on during that time. So I went to Casey. I was like, hey, like, do you mind if I maybe just do the last 10 days? Because I can't do the first three days. Like that first month, like as much as I'd love to just go on vacation with you guys in Europe, um, like for the rest of that time, other yeah. than the tour dates, like I can't because of school. Yeah. Would you mind if I just, um, if I just played the last 10 days and she was like that totally um so they found another person to play yeah so they hired some european guns and just like let them totally play those first couple uh dates and so so then so i went through school and then i went over there and that was that was a crazy experience because like you always see like tour on on movies and stuff yeah. like that and yeah, you have TV all these shows yeah and, like, and yeah. how glorified it is on Big there but it's like and- I mean, it's not like that at all, especially for the independent musician. Like, yeah. Yeah. it is. It you're carrying all your own shit. You're carrying yeah. like 
you're not traveling in a big bus. You're traveling in a little fucking yeah, van. What was the uh, like the entire? So you, mm-hmm. the band. Yeah. Was it just you guys? Did yep. you have any support crew? No just, roadies. Nothing. nothing. It, it was, was you guys. Yeah, it was me. The bass player was from Belgium. Okay. Um, so he lived there. So we were driving around in his van. Okay. Um, and then of course, uh, the drummer and uh, Evan and Casey. Um, they were all. Um, they were, they were obviously from America, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we were just traveling in a in a van all mm. all across Europe, and it was it was crazy too. Like, I mean, we went to like I said, we had like seven dates in a span of about eight days of me yeah. actually like being there. So there was only like one day where I got to relax, and we'd stay in hotels, and then we also would stay at like the uh, the bass player. His name is Renault. We'd stay at his house. Um, I slept on the floor. And there, it was crazy. <laughs> that that old trip was just a lot of weird because I I honestly didn't get that much like sleep. Yeah, um, yeah, over across eight days. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I tried to get at least like six hours so that I could like still play. Yeah. Well, um, but like it was it was it was tough. Um, yeah, and of course that's also not long enough to get over your jet lag. So you're like trying to sleep no, while also yeah. being twelve hours out of whack. While yeah. also performing. Yeah, dude. Like, I mean, luckily I tried to, on the flight there, I, I tried to just keep myself awake. Um, so that when I got to, cause we flew into Belgium. So yeah. when, when we got to Belgium, I would just like crash. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that. But then the next morning, I guess I just slept so hard that I woke up with a crick in my neck. Oh. So I had this like awful, awful crick that lasted months after the tour. Even. Holy shit. Yeah, it was bad. I think it was a combo between the plane ride and just sleeping in a really uncomfortable position. Yeah, like on the floor for or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the first night I actually stayed with my parents because they came with me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Shout yeah, out to my, my parents. Yeah, I know for real. Shout, Shout out to my parents and dad. for Shout real out though. Mom and dad, um, for new, you know. Yeah, and um, but yeah, it was it was an interesting tour. And there, I mean, it was interesting. Like you'd go into a venue. There was a couple of venues that we went into. I won't name them, but we went into a couple of venues, um, and. They were expecting a fully American band. And so when a Belgian bass player came in, they almost got racist towards him. Oh. And we're like, Where, wow. What, what country in Europe is this? Belgium. In Belgium? In they were, Belgium. Oh. Yeah, there was a venue where one of the, like, the manager guy was, like, like being racist towards the Belgian bass player because he came in first. And he was like, I thought there was supposed to be a fully American band. Like, we don't want Belgian players in here and, like, oh. all this stuff. And... Yeah, it was What's pretty. What's the difference, though? That's what I'm saying, bro. It was oh, yeah, ugly. He's gonna play the note. Everyone in the crowd's gonna go, "What? Oh, the that's f- a Belgium note. <laughs> what? Yeah, the- that's right. The most Belgium note I've ever heard. Right. I know. That's yeah, <laughs> exactly. And like that was the weirdest thing. I was sitting there, like I can't believe. Like you always think of racism as like colors, right? Yeah. yeah. But it was like no, was- I actually don't see colors. I'm actually just way better than that. So. <laughs> yeah, like color, yeah. religion, maybe. Yeah, like, exactly. Like but that. it was yeah. it was like it was like a white dude being racist to another white dude. They were both Belgian. But he was being like, racist because he wasn't like a different type of white dude. He wasn't like a an American white exactly. dude. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, an, right? That's an impressive hoop to jump. Yeah, through, I have it was. To say. It was eye opening. Racism two point oh. It was. Yeah, exactly. But like, but it was eye opening because you know, like everybody always thinks of racism in that very black and white, literally yeah. Yeah. stance, right? But like, it really does like range across different. Interesting. Like, yeah. like, like, kind of platforms. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's so strange. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you performed with them. Yes. Doing other people's music. Yes, her music and covers and stuff like that. Classic yes. blues songs, yes. and we do like a cool cover of like "Whole Lot of Love" that was more of like a slow swampy blues mm-hmm. oh, uh, version of it. It was that was like my favorite song that we'd play okay. every night. Yeah. Um, and it was cool, dude. I mean, people in Europe are so much more attentive to music. And they are here, like here people be on their phones and like, yeah. you know, talking and like doing other things while you're performing. Like but getting a drink whenever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And more worried about that kind of stuff. But in Europe, I mean, they are just like all eyes on you. And it's the most cool thing because they react to stuff you're doing in the middle of the song and stuff like that. And yeah. like, it's just such a cool feeling. You yeah. you really feel, you, it makes you feel more like a rock star. Um, yeah. Uh, paint the picture. Uh, how, what kind of venues are you playing? Like. Matt B, like festival, mm-hmm. outdoors, indoor, yeah, like what's bars. The, what's the biggest, like, crowd you've seen? Ever? Um, the festival that we played when I first, the first night I ever played with, it was actually the first time I'd ever played with them. Um, uh, when I got there, the night after I got there, um, we played this festival um, called the Blues in, in Schoten Festival. Um, Schoten's a little town in Belgium. I don't yeah. know if it's little. I really didn't actually get to explore it all that much. But, um, 
Yeah, that was a crazy big crowd. I mean, there's probably about a thousand people there. That's lit. Um, so uh, that was really fun. But the problem is I was a dumb American and didn't realize... Well, I did realize that the voltage was double over there, right? Yeah. Um, and I brought my pedal board and stuff like that. And I brought a converter, but the, the converter wasn't fitting into the slot on stage. And so I just asked to borrow another one of the guys, like AC power cords. Because it obviously the same into the into my power source, yeah, just a I, different. Yeah, I'm kind of scared. Yeah, I think input. I know where this is going. So I plugged it in in my pedal board, and all of a sudden my pedal board starts like like my power source starts humming, like which is never done. The fan is never on that hard, and then all of a sudden all the lights go out like on my pedal board, and I was oh, like, "Oh no, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. My, my my pedal board just died." Oh, right, wow. right, like ten minutes before we're supposed to start playing. So I had to like run backstage and I went to another one of the um one of the players that was on before and I was like, yeah. yo, can I please just like tear apart your pedal board and like put my shit on there, dude? Like I I know like you probably have this all signal chain like perfectly, but like I'm about like all the guitarist, right guitarist you were like, bro, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. I was like, dude, I know how much this is gonna yeah. pain and I'll try to put it back together the best I can. But like, can I please did he, he, did he Yeah, he was like, Yeah, go for it. And wow, I was like, yeah. Thank you so much. And I felt so bad tearing all his pedals off, but I was yeah. like, bro, like You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, exactly. Um Jesus. But yeah, so that was that was pretty funny. But it like it kind of set me up to be less nervous about the whole rest of the yeah. tour. I was like, it can't go worse than this. Yeah, it can't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you blow up the pedal board 10 minutes before yeah. you go on stage. It's only uphill from here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. It was really yeah. fun. And although it was tiring and like the whole process of, you know, flying two guitars over and oh yeah, pedal board and a massive suitcase so I can fit everything in there was mm -hmm. a lot, but it was just a great time. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what two years later, uh, back stateside, mm -hmm. you now what perform with uh, the David Spitzbaden trio? Yeah, that's what you guys are called. Yeah, so what LA, San Diego, yeah, the West Coast in general, or yeah, just... anywhere that takes us. I mean, that's like that's a cool thing. Like, we're trying to like expand like up into Northern California and yeah. kind of make our way up there too, and just kind of do all of California and start. You know, Lit. amassing a fan base in, yeah, the, in yeah, the California area. Along, yeah, along the coast. Do you yeah. have a manager? I do actually. My mom does my managing Seriously? for me. Seriously, yeah, she's yes, a manager. Yeah, she used to. She used to book a um, a motivational speaker back in like the late nineties. Wow. Um, and she was really good at it. Like his his a uh, his uh his business was kind of business was booming. It was yeah. I, before she got there though, like he would like negotiate his prices so low that it wasn't even worth it to him for him to go out there, but he'd do it just to like trying to get exposure. And cause he just was scared. Like yeah. after the first offer that they wouldn't like, um, that they wouldn't take him up. He like wasn't confident in himself. To, exactly. Like ask what he was worth. Yeah. And so my mom goes in there and totally innocently, like she, he just gives her all these things. It's like, just, you know, ask for these prices and stuff like that. So she just asked for those prices, wouldn't negotiate anything. And he just started getting all these gigs, like crazy motivational speaking huh. gigs. And, and she like organized everything in the office and like, yeah. it's kind of turned the whole place around. And, um, yeah. And so she's always been like, just naturally kind of good at it. Um, cause she's a very sociable person. Yeah. Do both your um, parents come from like a, like music or at least like a touring, I don't know, like any sort of entertainment background? All. Well, actually my dad, uh, like works in psychiatry. Oh, shit. Um, so, so yes. So, no. so he works for the Kaiser and stuff like that. Um, Kaiser. Yeah. And, um, and then my, but both my parents are technically social workers. Like my mom also got her master's in social work as well as my dad. Lit. Um, so not really, although my mom or my, my mom's mom, my grandma was an opera singer. Oh, wow. Um, Whoa. Yeah. She was like a straight up opera singer and she would, she didn't, it was kind of tragic. Like she auditioned for everything and before she could even sing most of the time, they just tell her she was too short. Huh. Um, what? Yeah. Yeah. But, now we're being heightest. Well, exactly. Exactly. It's crazy. Um, but I mean, that was like in the, gosh, in the like fifties yeah. and stuff That's like crazy. that. Like it's just more when that was more acceptable to yeah. be more particular about. Someone's height. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm still very particular about people's height. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. friends with anyone under five foot. Uh-oh. I'm not. <laughs> how, how often, <laughs> I'm just kidding. How often are you running into people under five feet? Dog. Okay. We you know, ever, have, <laughs> have you ever met a child? <laughs> yeah, dude. I run into children. I yeah, don't run into You children. hate children. No, I actually like children. Okay. I'm a children guy. But they're under five foot. Don't like them. 
Okay, that's I what need I'm tall chairs. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like you go to Disneyland, they've got like the you, this tall to yeah. ride. This tall to hang out with me. He just holds that <laughs> around with him all the time. Kids. Yeah. I don't feel like this is going in yeah, the right man, direction. Right. <laughs> hey. let's, let's not admit to something here, man. Hey, listen, hey. Rose Flower Radio, you heard it here first. <laughs> oh. Any, anyways. Okay. <laughs> um, so your parents, social yeah. workers. Yes. Your grandmother. Opera, opera singer. singer. My mom was a singer too. She loves singing, but okay. her mom really discouraged her from doing it. Because of her experience? Yeah, she's like, I didn't do it, so you couldn't. Which what I always type? think is the stupidest like yeah. analogy. Like um like So when did ideology. music come to you? When did uh you pick up the the baton, so to speak, and start um the baton? You say baton? I did say baton. Hey man, he's from somewhere else. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got no baton. Um, it was. It's kind of a. It's a very long journey. It wasn't yeah. like immediate. Um, I mean, from a young age, like this is a story I tell all the time. It probably shows up on every little like thing I've ever talked about. But when yeah. I was like, um, when I was younger, my mom like walked in on me like watching the Wiggles. And oh, like, that's embarrassing. I know, I, I know. I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> when like, I was three, <laughs> my mom found, walked in. I was like, yeah, I where is this going? Um, no, but she like, you know, just realized she was watching the Wiggles and I was watching it. And she was like, I don't want him to think this is what like good music is and like what good dancing just, is. Yeah. So hey, instead. Fruit salad though. Not, I'm not saying it's not good. Fruit salad though. But. Uh, yeah, yeah. One. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy. Exactly. <laughs> um. But she was like, I want him to really understand what good music is. Yeah. So she instead started having me watch like Michael Jackson music videos. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So I grew up listening to MJ um, and watching his music videos and kind of gaining that sense of rhythm. And like also like she would play like Kenny Loggins and yeah. Earthman and Fire yep. and like okay. all these like awesome, just musically interesting like like famous acts. You That's know? what I was gonna ask. Like following up in, yeah. into that, did your parent like what did your parents listen to? Because you're because yeah. I think you've mentioned this to me mm -hmm. outside of the podcast yeah. and outside of Rose Flower that you don't listen to the music that you make a lot of the time. No, I don't. Yeah, because like I grew up. I mean, like obviously, like that kind of stuff is more where my direction is heading. Yeah. Like yeah. the and it's cool because like a lot of those artists are pop artists yeah. yet their music and musicality is so interesting totally. which kind of explains where my desire to bring like interesting sounding music into the pop world is coming from you know because mm -hmm. I kind of want to follow after those guys and totally um, but yeah I mean as I grew up like I started getting more into like rap and R&B even like when I was in like second grade wow. like on the radio like Lil Wayne and Drake were Come popping on. up and Come stuff on. like that right like six foot seven oh, foot yeah, and yeah. like and forever, yeah, by Drake, like with everybody on there, and like yeah. Eminem, and like all those guys, and Kanye when he was yeah. like not crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, when, t when, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, when he did, when he did, when he didn't Kanye look crazy. as crazy, I yeah, guess fair. would be a better. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was like, I don't know, like I grew up listening to that, and then when I got, and then I got into dubstep. No way. Yeah, yeah, I was a big dubstep name fan. Some, and like, name some people if you Oh, yeah. like Who Skrillex and Dead Mouse. Yes. And then, um, oh, who else? Like, uh, oh, what's that one guy? Av Avicii? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Rest, in uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace for real. Um, and I really was getting into that kind of stuff. And like some one-off kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. dubstep stuff. And um, and I was just, because oh, I started skating. Yeah. And like that, that it, was too, kind yeah. of in the skating community. Yeah. It was like the dubstep. Yeah. Um, thing and so I was like in middle school I was like so into that but it was really I don't think it was a desire to listen to dubstep I think I was looking for something a little bit more intense to like match my yeah. angst yeah. you know I mean, as to a meet kid, the, you know, the teenage yeah, yeah to meet Saturday, where I yeah. felt all this intensity in myself already and that's kind of led me to like find Zeppelin yeah interesting. Uh, yeah oh, shit. weirdly enough and I just dive bombed on the Zeppelin yeah. in eighth grade. Like I remember I like all of a sudden just started listening to like all the Zeppelin stuff. What's and, your favorite album? Oh, probably Physical Graffiti. That or or Houses of the Holy. Because Houses respect, of the Holy, I, I think, that. is like such a solid album. Like the whole totally. thing is just like so banger after banger after banger after yeah, banger yeah, after yeah, banger, yeah. After banger yeah. right? Like No Quarter is like one of my favorite songs of all it's time awesome. by them. Like oh, yeah. man, it's so good. Um and then that led into Pink Floyd. Yep. Because I went to this like cover band concert. There was like a cover band of Zeppelin opening up for a cover band of Pink Floyd. Floyd. Yeah. yeah. Which they're called the Australian Pink Floyd Show. 
it's just a bunch of Aussies like yeah. like doing Pink Floyd. It's <laughs> fucking awesome. Um, and so I went to the Zeppelin concert with my friend Rocco, and uh, like the Zeppelin cover concert. And I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, like I'm probably just gonna stay for the Zeppelin thing and we'll leave because I didn't know I didn't really know any Pink Floyd. And I was like, uh, whatever, they're probably lame anyway. Um, Can't be saying and, that. <laughs> no, I know that's what I was saying. And Rocco was like, oh, like my dad really thought I would like. Pink Floyd, do you think we could just like stay around for like the like couple songs, see if you like it? And I was like, oh sure, whatever. Yeah. Once once we were there, and so we got to the end of the Zeppelin thing. I was like, okay, cool, let's stay for a couple songs for the Pink Floyd thing. And we just all sat. We were just sitting back. I think we were in like the third or fourth row of this yeah. concert. And I was like looking up at the stage, and all of a sudden, like Pink Floyd happened. Weed smoke everywhere. Yeah. And then like I think they opened up with Shine on Your Crazy Diamond. Yep. And I was immediately enthralled i was like it's, yeah i was like in a trance i was like oh my god this is amazing um and i fell in love i remember the, like the next day i had a project i had to work on i think i was like i was a freshman in yeah. high school and um and i i had a project to work on and it took me the whole day and i listened to the wall yeah over and over and over i listened to it four times because about two and a half hours yeah. long i listened to it four times over that eight hour period of working on that project it's crazy. And I fell in love. Yeah, I absolutely fell course. in love. Yeah. yeah. And then it led to like John Mayer, stuff like that. So this is when I was more listening to stuff that I make, mm-hmm. yeah. like similar to. Um, and then it like led to Stevie Ray Vaughan yep. and yeah. like all those guys. And like, I just kind of gained inspiration. And then towards the end of high school, I was like, I remember some guys were playing like Mac Miller yeah. in the car. They, were, they played What's the Use? And I was like, one, that bass line's fucking fat. Yeah. Um, and... Oh, yeah. um. And then two, like this flow is fucking sick. You know, I was like, oh my God, this guy's sick. And I was like, oh my God, this guy is cool. It was like, yeah. it was like right before he died. Yeah. Um, and um, and I was like started listening to him, listened to the whole like um swimming album. Yeah. And I was like, this guy's so cool. And then he died. And I was like so bummed out. Um, because I had just gotten into him and I was like, this is sick. But then I but then it kind of led me on this path. I was like, I've always loved rap. I don't know why I stopped listening to it for so yeah. long. So then I started like diving deeper into Mac and then started diving back into like Drake and Kanye and stuff like that and listening mm-hmm. to the albums that I missed when yeah. I was like kind of going yeah. on the other ventures. A couple of things I wanted to say about that is like mm-hmm. going into that, it's one, I don't think people understand like as a music maker and artist mm-hmm. or songwriter or whatever, like your inspirations, a lot of people are like, oh, it's, you know, he makes country music. So he only listens to, or, you know, I'm yeah. not saying you, but I'm just saying like general. Totally. And you don't realize like how much like you listen and you, learn from other different language or other different genres and what kind of goes into that what i was going to ask is like this is kind of one of our like key questions that we wanted to talk to and yeah went in so smoothly with music and with the blues and the rock that Mm -hmm. you're kind of doing in a new generation where pop is primary and like Mm -hmm. hip-hop is still there it's kind of shifting now it's in a weird own thing but like music right now like the charts are Nothing but like you know, Dua Lipa, pop, you know, all that stuff. Grande, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kendrick, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. who, yeah, it's not like the Jason Mraz, yeah, or it's not even like it's not even you don't have Pink Floyd anymore, yeah, you don't no, have, you yeah. have Greta Van Fleet. I feel like that's a close comparison. Yeah, it's maybe yeah. like a single artist or duo exactly. as opposed to traditional bands. Yeah. yeah. So the question with that is. As like, where do you see rock and where do you see blues in mm-hmm. today's like sort? Because mm. I yeah. feel like that you're like a a really cool reincarnation of some of those mm. bands, and I can also hear some of the other inspiration. I can yeah. hear Mac. I can hear you know. Yeah. And it's interesting how that combo led to you. So totally. the question is like, where with the blues, with the rock, with all of those things, where do you see that in your music mm. or in? music in general, mm. like coming into today's industry? I think it's going to have to go through a real modernization. Do you yeah. see it coming back? I do. It- I do. I think yeah. I think there's an emotion that comes with it. I think it's going to have to go through a little bit of change. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to come out on the other side looking like blues. Totally. Yeah. Do um, you think traditional that there blues, is a room for it to get up like as big as it was, say, in the 80s or the 90s? Yeah. Do you think, do you think like the the... The glory days, like the number, the days where rock and blues are number one, mm-hmm. are they gone completely? Mm. Or do you think there's potential in today's TikTok, Instagram, yeah. Spotify life mm-hmm. for an entire band, uh, for a rock band to like get superstar over mm-hmm. in the same way that say Dua Lipa, yeah, 
took over for a year or so, yeah. two years or so over the pandemic. Yeah. I think um I think it's a little tough to do that nowadays because mm-hmm. back then, like throughout all like the 1900s, like there was not so many niches, you mm-hmm. know, and it was very much like the genres were very well defined yeah. as to what these yeah, people were doing. Yeah, and you could tell who listened to reggae and who listened yeah. to rap. Exactly. And, you know, it was yeah, like, exactly. you were a rap artist. Mm-hmm. You were a rock artist. Yeah. You were a blues yeah. artist. You mm-hmm. did ballads. You did yeah. this. Yeah, there wasn't much overlap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, exactly. And like, I think, I think the direction that music is heading is more of a, um, is more of a, uh, uh, like like sectional. Oh, I thing. see what you're saying. Yeah, so yeah. like, you know, you're going to have, you find your niche mm-hmm. and you find those fans that are into that or there will be fans that are into that. And they may be fans of, there might be even people like, like, like I try to influence a lot of stuff in my music. Like I try to bring R&B, I try to bring yeah. like blues, I try to bring funk, I try to bring pop, I try yeah. to bring it all and kind of combo it into, you know, folk music. I try to bring it all into different songs that I do mm-hmm. depending on the genre. Like I don't really, I don't really see myself as a specific genre person I'm kind of I kind of see myself as an artist that is able to jump between genres and I think yeah sorry I didn't yeah, mean to cut you off that's okay I was gonna say I think that like that's kind of a new thing happening in mm-hmm. today's society yeah, a new you, concept it's like things are becoming genre where mm-hmm. you're like oh that guitar is math rock but then all of a sudden these drums are like 808s and you know it's like yeah, yeah there's an interesting blend of music that's happening and I think that because of streaming because People are listening to songs, not albums. Mm-hmm. People are like more in depth on the short, quick things. Yeah. People are listening to more. Totally. And people are listening to rap more. And also at the exact same time, they're listening to country. Like mm-hmm. genres are shifting and changing. Absolutely. And like, I, I think genres shouldn't be thrown on an artist, more or less their single songs that totally. come out, you know? So like, like that, that, then artist doesn't get defined by a genre, but they're, they're single songs do because like, I like to jump between folk. I like to jump between rock. Yeah. I like to jump between yeah. R and B, you know, like, it's like, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want my artistry to be, to, to be defined by a genre. I don't mind if you mm. define my songs in a genre. As you soon know? as you categorize anything, then yeah. it's kind of, it loses some of the yeah. spark. Yeah. Cause then I, like, I have to worry about if somebody labeled me as an R and B artist, I'd be like, okay, well now I now have, have to, to make an R and B I have to be R and B, you know? Yeah. If you release, um, you know, a different project, everyone's going to be like, the fuck is this? I thought you were an R and B artist. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Like a good example of that is like Kendrick's "The Pimp a Butterfly," right? Totally. 100%. Like half that album's jazz, jazz, right? Yeah. And like the other half's like rap. And then and then like there's some songs on there that are like combo pieces, you know. Yeah. But even on that album, you know, like uh, King Kunta, yeah. like that's mm-hmm. like such a. I'd almost call that like a, an like an R and B song, you know. Totally. Like there's more like a more like power soul song, yeah, yeah. You know, than there is than there is. Like rap, obviously there's like rap verses in that, but like, or like, you know, like I, you know, yeah. like I love myself. Like that's such a, like that's, I don't know, that song's more kind of genre bending. Like and it what's cool is that album it. is like considered one of the greatest exactly. of all time because yeah. it does stuff like that. And, and I feel like a lot of the greatest music, that pe- music that is considered the greatest of all time jumps between genre and genre. Yeah. Arguably what many people would consider to be the greatest song of all time, Bohemian Rhapsody. Look me yeah. in the eyes and tell me what fucking genre that song is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you could say it's like rock opera, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if you really wanted a genre to define it, but like it really does go between like a musical theater sound, there's rock moments, yeah. there's choral moments in that song. Like it's lit. There's so many cool things and like that's because they didn't let a genre define that song. Yeah. They weren't like, oh shit, we got to make all this a rock song, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. And but. so… As much as we, I am loving this conversation. Yeah. I think we are out of time. We kind of yeah. gotta wrap it up. So, okay. yeah. just uh, for you, it's all your fault. Yeah, sorry, you guys, man. If anybody wants to find David, we can watch his Roast Power Live video out now. Or and David, where can they find you elsewhere online? Oh, um, I have a lot of things. Um, I have a interesting. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, I have an Instagram. I have, uh, which is uh, at David underscore Spitzfaden. That's spelled S P I T Z F A D E N. That would be we can cool put it if up you put on it right screen. There. Yeah, we'll so put it up cool. right there. Uh, it's gonna be like up here. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, put it on the office show yeah, where you right? put it. Um, and then I and like I have a YouTube channel. But if you go to my Instagram, I have a link tree. 
Um, you can just go on there and like at the bottom, my OnlyFans is down there too. So of uh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> only <laughs> yeah. lots of toes. I've seen yeah, it. it's, it's, a, yeah, it's all about feet. I have feet. the premium <laughs> subscription personally. Do you? Yeah. I How do you like it? We had to get to know oh, you before great. you hopped on the okay, podcast. Yeah, yeah, I actually course. have screenshots in my notes. Oh, right now. <laughs> you can post them around me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> we were gonna talk about that, but we decided not to. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, you it's okay. I brought it up. Same as Dick and Ian. On you, Micah. Where can everybody find you? You can find me Instagram Micah W Music. That's it. Um, I mean, you can do elsewhere, but also Twitter, Mike at W Music. I'm trying to post more on Twitter. So. I saw you. Came I know. Up on I my Twitter. You, me you on came Twitter. up on my Twitter. Somebody like you were like somebody like this tweet. And Come I was on, Mike, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Come on. Who is Jimmy, and why is he eating the world? Uh, if you are interested in more episodes of Rochester Radio, uh, Rochester Records at Rochester Records on Instagram, on Twitter, Rochester Records on YouTube. My name is Finley Mathias. You can find me at Finley Did It on Instagram, Twitter. Anything else? Mm. Thank you so much for mm. watching and thank you for watching. Thanks, Bye. Peace out. <laughs>